Alright, welcome back to another touch designer tutorial. And in this one we're going to look at um, another feedback loop and how to create uh, some sort of organic growth as the title of the video suggests. And before I kind of show you what you can do with this, I'm going to show you this article that this is uh, inspired by, inspired from. Um, so I'm gonna gonna link this in the description. This is a really nice uh, post about uh, this sort of technique, but like a lot more advanced and using uh, GLSL or like processing. And um, yeah, it's a really nice explanation of the sort of idea behind this. And uh, generally, I can highly recommend reading some of the articles on here. It's uh, some really interesting posts. Um, so this, what we're gonna do in Touch Designer, isn't gonna be as advanced uh, as this. So it's a bit more simple, but um, you can easily expand this because it's just you know it's just a feedback loop. You, so you can put in anything there, and if you've seen my recent um, my uh, my recent Instagram posts, uh, everything is sort of based on this technique and just expand it. And I'm going to give some tips at the end uh, on like how to how to sort of go into that direction. Okay, so what can you do with this? So what I'm showing you here is just one of the aesthetics uh, that we can you can go for. Uh, this is another one. Um, you can also uh, make this nicely mirrored, which I think looks also pretty interesting. And um, you can also go for this sort of 8-bit look, which I really like. Uh, which just looks like this retro graphic kind of organic structure that's growing and I really I think that's that's pretty cool and it's a very simple trick generally and you can also um, like this is sort of similar to my particle image reveal tutorial but you're like more in control also of the of the speed of the growth um, and like uh, yeah yeah <laughs> so uh, you can also base this on images so uh, let's actually get rid of the, the limit here and um, so this is just like this earth uh, structure image from uh, above and I just kind of changed that. So it needs to be some kind of high contrast image. And um, <coughs> yeah, so it probably doesn't work with uh, every image and uh, it works better with like fine structures. But I think it looks pretty cool, for, especially for this uh, image right now. All right. so. As always, I'm just going to delete everything and start with you together from scratch. So um, let's start with a noise as usual lately. And let's go down with the period quite a bit. And we, as always, you can change this later. Uh, actually, let's change the resolution first. So I'm going to just use 1280 by oops, 1280. And just right click and copy this parameter because we want to use it on other tops. So all right, so the period goes down to 0 0.04 or something. We don't want any harmonics on this. Uh, we can go down with the uh, exponent a bit. We can go up with the amplitude a bit. And we don't really need any offset, maybe like just a bit. And um, let's just copy and paste this noise and pass the uh, reference in here. So we have the same size if we change this one. And Let's um, yeah, let's change the period to 0.5 here, so we're like a, a lot bigger. We want a bit of harmonics, maybe. Um, we can leave. Uh, no, we can change this to like one. It's like two, and uh, this maybe to like 0.55, something like this. And now we want to just sprinkle this with uh, that one. So we're just going to use a composite. And so we just have this bigger structure um, overlaid or sort of multiplied, you know, by uh, the fine structure. And you can already sort of see the structure that's coming out at the end. Um, so I'm going to just add a null with Alt N. And uh, we we'll now want to create a circle because uh, it's going to be the basis of this. So again, on the resolution, I'm going to pass the reference. And I'm going to change the radius to like something quite small, like 0 0.005. And we can put a bit of softness on here, so like 0 0.02. So we barely have a circle, but just a bit of white there in the, uh, in the center. 
And now we want to build our feedback loop. So I'm going to add a feedback tab and add a composite to this, which we're going to put here at the end. And um, just drag this back on there. And before I get go further, let's do a couple, couple of more things to set this up. So we just use a keyboard in chop and use this for the pulse. So I can just press one on my keyboard to pulse this. And um, add a null here at the end, call this BG, and turn the display on. And in here, uh, I can now insert a, an RGB key. I recently saw that on tutorial. This is like putting a print transform and then putting some uh, background there. But this is just doing it by just inserting this top. So I really like that. One, one action less to do. <laughs> OK, so right now our feedback loop here. Um, I'm going to do the, do what I need to do first and then uh, explain it to you. So I'm just going to add a Luma blur in here, add this down here, and then composite this in here. And let's change this composite from uh, multiply to add. And um, there you can already sort of see this working. I'm going to just go up with the Luma blur. And now I'm going to explain you, try to explain what's happening here. All right, so in the beginning, uh, we have a circle, like, a, a you know, just this very tiny dot in the center. And then we're feeding that, we're using, using that as a base. So this is our starting point. And we're using this uh, here through the feedback, we're using this um, as this the, the source image one for the Luma blur. And we're using this as the sort of map where to blur it. And I'm going to just sort of go through this step by step so you can see how this is slowly growing. So wh what's happening here, if we look at this structure that's here right now, now we're like, if I go one frame further, we're just blurring it wherever there's white on this input map. So if I go one step further, it's just being blurred a bit more. And this blurred image is being fed into here, then back to this feedback, and then in here again. So we're just creating this loop here. So um, with the blur, we've sort of expanded the image based on this input image. And then we're feeding that back into itself. So we're like blurring or like growing the image that's already been grown. So this way we're like growing it every frame because we're just adding blur to the blurred structure. And if we play this, uh, you know, it's just sort of going through this here. Yeah, nice. So that that is that is pretty much it, actually. You know, that's the, that's the technique. We can, uh, with the white filter width, we can say how fast this is supposed to grow, like how strong our uh, blur is. And we can just put that down a bit to make it go slower. And um, <coughs> what we can do now uh, is quite a lot of things, actually. First, we can go to the noise and we can change the seeds here. So every time you change your seed, um, we, you're going to have a different sort of growth pattern. And you can also go here and uh, animate this uh, ABS time dot seconds times like 0.2 maybe, um, which also makes for a di bit different effect. So it's more like spread pretty much. But what I don't really like about this is that it's going to be more or less like filling all the screen because you know the white part is going to be uh, everywhere at some point so um, I like it more like when it's not moving you can make move uh, move you can <laughs> can make both move uh, or just the first one or something but I sort of like it with just static and then just uh, changing the seat and you can obviously change the period here so on the first one if you change it then it's a like a bigger structure and obviously you don't need the second one here. You can just use one noise. This also works. But then again, it's going to be like spread pretty much everywhere. So um, I sort of like this, like having this uh, second noise. So you can also make that bigger. And then it's only going to be wherever the biggest structure is. But it's still going to have like this fine structure of the first one. So uh, yeah. It's also nice to, to change the period um, after some time so you can maybe like first make it big and then like go slower 
uh, smaller. And then you have this sort of structure so that's also cool. You can maybe use an LFO for that or something. All right, so let's look at how to use, how to make this sort of 8-bit structure. So I'm going to use a limit top for that and just insert that in here. Go to the quantize tab, quantize position, and change this to round. And first you're going to get these huge blocks and no movement. So we just that's just because the step value here is too high. So we need, need to go down with this to like 0 0.005 or something. And now you can see uh, it's, it's, it's working better. And we also need to go to like all of these and change them to nearest pixel to have like a very clean cut. And um, we also need to like increase the luma blur on this one. So yeah, it's working pretty nicely. I'm going to go down with this again. All right. And what we can also do here at the end, we can uh, insert an edge. And uh, instantly we have this cool looking structure that I showed in the beginning. And you can also go like turn off the limit again. And then you have this sort of more organic structure. So this is really nice. Uh, the, the edge is actually, I think it's underrated, <laughs> underrated top. Um, yeah, so this is uh, one way to go. Another thing you can do is insert a mirror here and um, change this to flip X maybe. And now you have this cool mirrored image. Um, yeah, which I think looks very interesting. Maybe go down with the offset here completely. You can go down with the offset here as well. Something like this, you know, you can just, just play around with this. And now I'm going to show you how to do this with an image. So I'm going to use a movie file in and um, just pick this image that I had in the beginning. So it worked pretty well. Uh, but you know, you can use anything really. But I think, as I said in the beginning, finer structures on the image work better. So it's sort of similar to the noise, I guess. Um, then I'm going to use a fit here. Uh, in my case, or it's already like a uh, rectangular, but, uh, or like a, you know, a square. That's what I mean. It's always rectangular. Um, and I want to have to fit here the same resolution. So I'm just going to pass the reference again. I'm going to use a monochrome because I want to have only black and white values. And then I'm going to attach a level here and change the gamma down a bit to like 0.7 and the contrast way up to like 5. And then I can uh, put that into the null here instead and um, maybe turn off the limit. And also maybe turn whoop, change everything to interpolate pixels again. Okay, so this works pretty nicely. Let's actually check this out maybe with a different image like this. Yeah, the thing is, uh, the problem that we can see here, um, we have the circle here in the center, but if there is no white value, um, then it's not going to like uh, grow there because there needs to be some kind of white, white value. So maybe we need to go up with the gamma a bit. So this way it works pretty nicely. And what we can also do, um, is use a level here and go down with the opacity a bit. So it's sort of like becoming less over time. And no, it's not working anymore. But I think that that sort of like it doesn't look nice actually on this image. <laughs> but uh I just wanted to show you that it's possible. Uh also you on the fit actually let's set this to fit outside. Always a bit nicer. And maybe go down with the gamma again. Maybe go up with the blur. Or go down with the blur. I don't know. Really, just just try what works best for you. Uh, what you can also do is um, put a composite here and composite this with itself again. And um, maybe go up with the opacity here. So this way uh, it actually also kind of looks better. And this way you can also technically uh, have colors. Actually, let's let's look at this. If you, if you put the noise in here 
and if you turn off the monochrome then this way you can have colors if you turn this off you only have black and white values that's just how the new model works I guess no, I, I don't know because we're using this as a map, not not as the source image. If this color, ha uh, if this circle had a color, then it would still be there. But yeah, it also doesn't actually look that nice. But I just wanted to show you that that's possible. All right. Anyways, um, as I said in the beginning, um, what you can do here, you can insert uh, like in my last um, tutorial of the, like uh, the, the watercolors. Um, you can insert like slope and more blurring and compositing here so uh, to make this look really nice and organic and there's some yeah that, to kind of get the aesthetics maybe that that I posted on Instagram so check that out to see what's possible with this but I don't want to you know share every little detail of my work <laughs> but I uh, yeah you can really do some some cool things here I'm excited to see what you come up with um yeah so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i am um, I my my life is kind of a mess at the moment because of you know it's way too hot and i can't handle that and um i'm also moving and stuff so i hope i can like post more videos soon again i also do my bachelor still so yeah but i uh anyways if you want to support me uh, on my journey and have some cool stuff <laughs> then you can uh, support me on Patreon. I'm going to link that in the description. And thanks so much for all the people that are supporting me. And I'll uh, see you on the next video.